We will now talk about optimal taxation. So far in this lecture, we have learned that the tax incidence is borne by different sides of the market and that taxation can and often does lead to welfare loss. So we have learned that if we have, if we tax a good or if we tax labor, that there is typically a deadweight loss or a loss of efficiency. And that obviously makes balancing equity and efficiency complicated because we are in this second best world. So it's not that we can just choose whatever level of taxes we want and are always and, and, and never have any efficiency loss. So there is a balance between equity and efficiency. And what we want to think about now is um, on the efficiency side, what can be done to minimize the distortionary effect of taxes? So the idea here is that from the perspective of the government, we want to have a given revenue because that's what we need to do whatever we want to do. And given that revenue, we want to minimize the distortionary effect on the economy. So we want to minimize the size of that triangle that we've seen in the previous video. Now, optimal commodity taxation goes back to this gentleman up here, to Frank Ramsey, who already in 1927 came up with this uh, very important theory that is taught to any undergrad economics students until today. So we will look at basically what minima what tax rate minimizes the deadweight loss and while keeping the the revenue at the desired level. That's what we're gonna do here. So we we are Starting with a very simple model, we assume a perfectly elastic supply curve for a good. So the price P is constant. And uh, we assume that all people in this economy, all consumers are the same. So we just have one representative consumer. And that consumer pays a price for a good that is Q. And Q is the price that it costs for the producer to, to supply it or that is charged by the, uh, by the producer uh, plus the tax. Now here, because the supply is perfectly elastic, it means that the entire tax burden will be borne by the consumer. So this is a, a very extreme case but it's very useful to illustrate the logic of optimal taxation. It, it would not be hard to extend it and to, to have a model where you have uh, inelastic or, or not perfectly elastic supply, um, but that would just unnecessarily complicate things. So here is what, what we have. Okay, so we have here um, the the tax that is levied. So first of all, we have the supply curve here that is just a straight horizontal line because it's constant. Um, and we have then the tax that is levied on that good. So that's just put on top of the price. That's the price that consumers pay and producers completely pass this price on to producers. Sorry, producers completely pass this price on to consumers. Okay? And so it's also very easy to see what happens with consumer surplus. So before the tax was levied and we our consumption is at the level Q, that blue rectangle here would be the consumer surplus. Okay? Now, after the tax, the consumer surplus is smaller and I'm, I'm shading this in red here. It's just this surface up here. Okay. So we have the tax revenue that now goes to the taxman 
that is the, in green here. So we, we get a tax revenue, um, but there is also a, a dead weight loss. Why? Well, because we now consume fewer goods, right? We no longer consume Q units of goods, of that good, but Q prime, which is smaller, and we consume them at a higher price. And the combination of the two is the welfare loss. And in that case, that's completely borne by the consumers. So that's, that's the efficiency loss. Okay? And we can also calculate what that efficiency loss is, which is then quite useful in, in the next step, in the next video, to, to really calculate, well, what would be the, uh, the, optimal, the optimal tax on that good? So let's start here. Um, we, I've used here the notation X instead of Q. Um, and so the dead weight loss is nothing more than that triangle here, that triangle in orange. And so, so that is on the one side, we have the, the amount Q minus Q prime. Okay, times the vertical uh, bit of that triangle times the tax. And because it's a triangle and not a rectangle, we have to divide it by two. Right? Um, think about it like that. Um, if we have a rectangle here um, where this is A and this is B, then A times B would be the surface of the rectangle. Uh, a half times A times B would be the surface of any of those two triangles. Okay, so for example, the one shaded in blue here, we use the same logic here. So it's Q minus Q, Q prime times T divided by two. That's the, that's the dead weight loss that you can see here. Okay? So now what we assume here is that the tax is a marginal tax. So, so simply the price gets increased uh, by T. So if, if the price per, if, if the tax per good is T, then the price of that good goes up by T. And so uh, we then define the, uh, the change in, in X as the, the change in the number of goods consumed as the um, difference between the new consumption and the old consumption and the change in price is simply the tax rate. So if we do that and we, we substitute that into the deadweight loss up here, what we are left with is the deadweight loss equals the, let's leave the tax as it is. And then we have times minus dx. So that's the change in the number of, uh, of goods consumed times one half. Yeah, that, that's what you that's what you can see here. Now, why do we do this? Because we want to bring this together with the demand elasticity. So we want to bring this together with the slope of that demand curve, because this the slope of that demand curve is central to Ramsey's theory of optimal taxation. So and, and we have a a very simple expression for the slope of that demand curve, and that's called the elasticity of demand. You can see this down here, um, and it's it's what does it tell us? It tells us that if the price, which is here in the denominator, if the price goes up by one percent, by how many percent does the amount that is or the quantity demanded for that good go down. That's what the demand elasticity tells us. And now what we can do is we can solve this for dx and then plug it into this formula for the dead weight loss. So I'm, I'm quickly going to do this. Uh, over here, so the I'm, I'm using uh, this this formula for the demand elasticity here, and I'm going to rewrite it as the uh, epsilon equals dx 
divided by dp times p divided by x. Okay, so that's just that, you know, those, those two fractions, one in the numerator, one in the denominator, rearranged. And so now we solve here for dx. So we have epsilon times x divided by p times dp. And so that we're going to take now this dx and plug it in here and we're done. So what that means is um, we have minus t times epsilon times x divided by p and then remember here that we said that uh, the change in price is just the tax rate so we can use that here and replace dp by t and so so here we have then times times t which is minus epsilon times x over p apologies there has to be divided by 2 and we arrive here okay. so why am i showing you this this derivation um i'm showing you this because we can now um use this to to really think about what minimizes the what tax rate minimizes the dead weight loss because all the elements here in that formula we know okay so we know we know what the equilibrium quantity and the equilibrium price is we know what the demand elasticity is so all we need is the actual uh, the, the actual tax rate and that that's the variable that we have okay? and so so basically what we do here is we have here the dead weight loss and we have the tax revenue and we want to minimize the dead weight loss subject to a constant tax revenue that's the idea and why that elasticity is in here well, we will later see, or, or we've seen already before that the tax burden depends very much on what the elasticity actually is. And so if, if the, the elasticity is higher, we will have a greater tax burden. So you, you can think about this as follows. Um, now, suppose again the supply curve is just horizontal so that's that's p so we have this diagram here and we have a demand curve that is very inelastic um so obviously then if we in, if we levy a tax this is completely passed on to the consumers here and so let's say it's at that level and, and so so the tax will be the the dead weight loss here will be actually quite small whereas if we had a demand curve and i'm just gonna draw this in a very rogue fashion in in here where the demand curve is very very flat Okay, so so I'm, I'm just going to draw a second diagram here. It's I, I think it's easy to see here that if the demand curve is flat, that, that triangle gets a lot bigger. Okay? And so Ramsey's rule will tell us in the next video that we should tax those items more where consumers have a steep demand curve. So where the demand is fairly inelastic. Why? Because we get the same amount of tax revenue, but we have a lot less dead weight loss. So we want to have dead weight loss that looks like this. We don't want to have dead weight loss that looks like that. And that's why some goods should, if you think about it purely from an efficiency perspective, 
you would tax the good on the left here a lot more than the good on the right.